Let's move on here to the next news story. Coming from Forbes, written by Paul Tassi. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 was a 16-month rush job, surprising huh. no one. You know At this say. point, yeah. At this point, it's becoming established that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3's campaign may be the worst in the series' history, with the entire game feeling like a tacked-on addition to last year's Modern Warfare 2. As it turns out, there's a reason for that. As revealed in a new Jason Try report about what exactly happened here, it should surprise no one that, yes, this exact absolutely was a rush job that required such hammer to crunch hard and turn around a campaign in 16 months when previously Call of Duty games were on a rotating three-year cycle. The idea was that Modern Warfare 3 was originally an expansion of Modern Warfare 2, not a full new game. But that changed over time as Activision wanted a real Call of Duty game to be sold in the holiday season, as one always is. Activision denies this now, but according to Trier's report, a dozen current and former employees say that's what they were told in some form or another. Those working at Sledgehammer were upset about this new rush timeline after they had had to previously sprint to release Call of Duty Vanguard and were told that wouldn't happen again. Instead, they had to make the new campaign in 16 months, by far the shortest dev cycle in series history. And the result was a short collection of missions that currently has a disastrous 53 on Open Critic. That was when this was written. Let's see what it's at now. Uh, it's up to 58. It's up to 58 Ooh, now. Oh, 58. <laughs> Good job. Uh, <laughs> it's an all-time low for this series. Apparently, the original plan was for Sledgehammer to make an advanced warfare sequel, adding on to the story of the 2014 game. But that was axed in favor of another Modern Warfare, where it's become increasingly clear Activision has only wanted Modern Warfare Black Ops games these days. Now the debate uh, around what to do with Call of Duty turns to Microsoft as they are the new owners of both Activision and the IP. Back when the acquisition talks first started, there was this idea that Activision Studio lineup would not continue to be hammered into being Call of Duty support studios, and some would be allowed to go back to working on other IPs. And maybe Call of Duty no longer needed to have a yearly release cadence, but that was a long time ago, and we have no idea what Microsoft's current plans are. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There was I have an, an idea. On, there was an update on this I wanted to get to. So update, uh, it doesn't say when this update happened, but... Sometime in the last couple days, apparently. Sledgehammer has tweeted about the development report, saying they are proud of Modern Warfare 3, and they call it the first direct sequel in the franchise. Um, that doesn't make sense, because is when that's it's what are they, it says it's the first direct sequel in the franchise. What are you talking about? You've made a bunch of other games that also were sequels. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. But anyways, here's their tweet. Sledgehammer Games from November 9th. Statement from Aaron Hallen, Studio Head, SHG. We're incredibly proud of Modern Warfare 3, both the full game experience at launch and the upcoming year of content we have planned for the community. On behalf of the extremely talented team across Sledgehammer Games and our partner studios with whom we've collaborated on development, this has been a labor of love to lead to the first ever back-to-back -back sequel in Call of Duty. I think I know what they mean. Because usually, like it's the article said, they take a break. Like it would be Modern Warfare, and then Black Ops, and then Modern Warfare, and then something else. So this is the first time they've done two years in a row of the same franchise. Uh, we cannot wait to see our community's reaction to all to all that the entire game has to offer across campaign, multiplayer, and zombies. From the start of development, we have all been laser focused on creating the next groundbreaking Call of Duty game. Long before we wrapped up our previous game, we heard loud and clear from fans about the desire to stay and play together for longer within the same series. And that's what we've delivered first true sequel in franchise history. It is also why we added features like Carry Forward for the first time to honor the investment our players have made in Modern Warfare series. We're proud to be the team to lead the way on Modern Warfare 3. We have worked hard to deliver on this vision, which has been years in the making. Anything said to the contrary is simply not true. This is our game, and we cannot wait to play it online with all of you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, kind of totally refuting all these claims saying like no like development was great this has been planned all along we love it you guys love it everything's good it's somebody's like, lying someone's lying here <laughs> and once again i have a sneaky suspicion uh it's not all, all of the critics who reviewed it and gave it a four out of ten right <laughs> no or jason like jason trier does some good hard investigative work typically like he has sources, you know, it's not like he's just making this stuff up typically. Like he's talks to people who work there and they share their stories anonymously with them. 
it just seems crazy that they're like no everything was peachy over here everything's good <laughs> like all right cool um, sure thing whatever you say yeah ign gave it a four out of ten gamespot gave it a five out of ten three out of ten digital spy digital trends give it a two and a half out of five horrendous ratings across the board three percent recommend uh adrian what are your thoughts on this I think we are seeing the <laughs> exact product of what happens when you make a game in this environment, right? Yeah. Uh, there was evidence of of Activision saying that they weren't going to, they were going to look into not doing an annual COD. And clearly they, they doubled back on that and said, nope, money please, put it out now. Yep. And forced this studio into a 16 month crunch, basically to get this terrible product out which had to be it it literally there's no other way this game could have come out than this and been a competent product with 16 i i totally understand why the campaign is three hours yeah right (laughs) there's no way that's the wildest thing is yeah like when they came out and they're like yeah imagine spending 60 70 dollars and getting through the campaign in three to four hours i was like all right so I, I was trying to think of like a movie that was like close to two to three hours or whatever i was like imagine going to see like uh t- well avengers endgame was like two and a half right or was that mm-hmm. close to three uh that was two you know it'd be like, like um or like avatar like, or something like that or i don't no, know Titanic, i would never like, no absolutely no uh lord of the rings, lord of the yeah, rings you imagine can, going you to argue well, that. i would spend 70 dollars that's see what lord i was saying you can argue that one <laughs> but like but that's what I'm saying. Like, imagine, like, what it sounds like is imagine it's like Avatar 16. It's three hours long, and you paid seventy dollars to go watch it. And you're like, why did I do this? <laughs> I, this was poor money management on my part. <laughs> but see, I wouldn't. I and I, I said this too. I said I wouldn't have a problem if okay, it's four hours, but it's four awesome hours. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like we a lot of people most people are still hung up on this this thing that a game needs to be super long for it to be quality right, right. we talked about it a few weeks ago with the, yeah. the spider-man thing yeah exactly. exactly and we at least we believe that's not true right but it's okay I, I to have think, a short game right i think it would i think it would have been a much different discussion around this game if it was four hours but it was four incredible like it was an, an incredible story that yep. left you on like a, a crazy cliffhanger. There was more DLC coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or at yeah, least for, I think I think the blow would have been softened yeah. versus what happened and what we got and what the yeah. situation we're in now. Everything we've heard is like the story is bland and boring and slow and like the villains are like whatever. It's just like apparently oh, it's man. just repurposed Warzone maps too, from what I'm reading ridiculous oh yeah yeah it's just like <laughs> yeah uh, well was it warzone or was it uh modern warfare 2 maps the modern uh, warfare 2 or 3 maps are are just warzone maps that have been repurposed in right, like people okay. are finding landmarks in the in the levels that are in the warzone map <laughs> well yeah from from what little gameplay i've seen they literally go to like uh like you actually go to like verdansk which was like the main map of Warzone when it first came out and like you drive up to like the big soccer field that's in the middle like the big stadium that was in the middle of the the map and it's like oh so they, they literally just using Redansk and just added like civilians now running around there and like right. to just add to the, make it seem more like lived in and not a war yeah. zone. And they had to like, do what they oh, had to do they, okay. it was already made right the asset was already made we don't have to spend the time making it just put people in it I get it it's just sucky that they had to to develop like that with that kind of mindset yeah yeah uh i for the longest time i've only been a fan of call of duty's campaigns um but the last couple that have come out i yeah i haven't purchased i mean for other reasons are you not not a zombie guy uh back in the day i did as Mm. it went on zombies got less and less interesting to me like world at war to me is still peak uh, Black Ops was fantastic, but after that, like even with like Black Ops Two and like as it went on, I'm like, oh, this is like, is it gonna start getting too convoluted for me? Like when they started to add a story to like the zombies and like all these crazy Easter eggs that takes, you know, 
800 hours to figure <laughs> out and like you got to like stand on your head just right to like open a door i'm like all right now i just want to shoot some zombies and like set that's up when cool you go to dead ops cool 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 traps and stuff like that so for me like world at war like the original zombies and then uh like black ops that was killer that was great but like ever since then it's like oh this is fun but it's not the same but i mean but what i was going to say though is like not quality wise, Call of Duty's already been kind of like on a, a little bit of a decline the last few years, at least with the campaigns. But then also, you know, all the issues with Bobby Kotick and the company too. We've, I, it was, what was that a couple of years ago when I made the declaration I wasn't going to buy, you know, Activision game to support him, <laughs> and I haven't. So it's right. like, uh, he's now only got two more weeks. What? A, yeah, a month, a, and a month, got, and a, six weeks. Yeah, another month that I can. I can buy uh, some some old Call of Duty games, but uh, <laughs> not this one, though. No. Not Modern Warfare 3. I'll buy, like, one of the older ones. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. This is just... It's sad, really. Like, I know they're trying to, like, play it off. Like, oh, this is so cool. Like, we did our first back-to-back, -back, like, direct sequel. You guys wanted this. This is fantastic. But it's no, like... No, we didn't. You wanted this. No, they yeah. didn't even want the... Uh, uh, Activision management wanted this. Yeah, Activision management wanted some money and... I mean, what's what's I just I think I the don't saddest understand. part, the saddest part about the situation to me is like you like we, we always say and, you know, other other podcasts will say, like, vote with your wallet. Right. Right. But the problem is, is even though the campaign sucks, the multiplayer is always a banger like they, they don't miss with the multiplayer in most cases. So unfortunately, this game is going to make millions of dollars because everyone has to have the newest multiplayer maps and modes and everything, get the new operators and all this uh, stuff. So it's like, so you say like, vote with your wallet and everyone's like, eh, I don't play the campaign anyway, so I'm going to buy it. And it's like, well, ah, ah, okay. Like, and they're like, they don't okay, realize, they don't I realize, click buy. They don't, yeah, they don't realize how much like, as the campaign slowly degrades, like that, that does leak over into other parts of the game. Like, you're not getting the best quality multiplayer that you would like. You may not realize it, but if like if the campaign is that bad, imagine the corners they cut in the multiplayer. Like there could have been features that you know you're missing out on, or even like like weird glitches and bugs for the first few months. Like I don't know. It's it's not just like a it only directs campaign. Like that's the most glaring problem here. But that obviously means I haven't seen reviews for multiplayer and stuff yet because usually they do like in re like, they do. Uh, uh, reviews in progress kind of thing until they have a few weeks to do multiplayer and whatnot. Um, so as far as I know, those reviews haven't come out yet, but it's like, I don't know. I can only think like, oh, there's probably going to be issues with, with those as well, right? <laughs> I don't know. Is it sad? Because it's like, vote with your wallet. Like, don't support them. And everyone's like, eh, I don't play campaign anyways. I'm going to give them the $70. It's like, oh, <laughs> like, okay, whatever. Just keep encouraging it. Just keep encouraging it. You're going to keep getting garbage. <laughs> uh crazy i don't know especially when warzone's free when warzone's free it's like why spend 70 bucks for something that you know is like for not bad not made not made well <laughs> right uh, i don't care how hard you work like i'm not saying they didn't work hard like the people over there let me very be very clear i'm sure everyone at sledgehammer games work their butts off oh yeah but blood Absolutely. sweat and tears in this so i'm not here to say like you guys did like bad work but the end product unfortunately is bad it's as the a result, result of the environment they the worked in exactly the environment that they were forced to work in and, and the pressure that they were put under and stuff and that's the that's fact that they sad. got a game out at all is amazing kind of 16 wild. months <laughs> that's that's for a game this large and i think the only reason they were able to is by reusing warzone and right modern warfare 2 assets basically because otherwise like that's insane like for a triple a game like imagine imagine like hearing like yeah spider-man 2 or god of war ragnarok 16 months bang that sucker out it's like oh no, oh, no. <laughs> like what are so we doing <laughs> oh so bad uh, uh, Naughty Dog needs to take some notes. They could put out freaking their multiplayer game. <laughs> hey, look, Call of Duty is doing it in 16 months. What are you doing, Naughty Dog? What's going on over there? Oh, no, I don't want that. I don't want this that, that <laughs> timeline. Don't let us be in that one. That, that was also another uh, article that I passed on for this week was apparently the director of the Naughty Dog multiplayer game. I can't even remember the name of it. Uh, came out and said, like, yeah, we're still working on it. Everything's look, look going great. It's like, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, 
Leave going so shit. great, you don't have any more concept art, any more <laughs> images, <laughs> any more anything. Gotcha. Not even like pre-alpha footage. I mean, they freaking right. put uh, Xbox literally released uh, uh, pre-alpha Unreal Engine 5 and, uh, footage of Metal Gear Solid Delta. Like, this game's not coming out for two, three years at least. And if they, that, they're, yeah. they're, they're putting out footage of this, of the remake. Meanwhile, this <laughs> Naughty Dog game, they're just like, uh, nothing yet to report. Sorry. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, I mean, hopefully this all gets straightened out under under the new Xbox manage- management and uh, they can get them on a regular cadence or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. But this I mean, the stop. old schedule was great where basically it was Treyarch, uh, Infinity Ward, and Sledgehammer, and Raven. Right. Like those four just like taking turns. Like it basically gave them a technically Two, like three a, years a three to well a three to four year cycle because they were just yeah. like there's four studios all t- well it was three for a while and then raven joined in on one but then i think raven became more of a support studio so but every it gave him three years to basically develop a call of duty game it's like right. that's fantastic those games were great back then when you were doing that that was great like you know because you would get uh infinity ward was doing all the modern warfare games Sledgehammer, what, or sorry, Treyarch was doing all the Black Ops or like uh, whatever, like the more like World at War stuff like that, like the dark gritty stuff, which I always loved it. Whenever I saw Treyarch, I'm like, I oh, meant this is going to be a good Call of Duty. And then Sledgehammer came in with like, uh, did they do Advanced, Advanced Warfighter? Uh, that's um, Ghost Recon. Sorry, not Advanced. No, Advanced. Not yeah. Ghost Recon it, Advanced. advanced no, you're right, but th- it's called Advanced something. Sledgehammer games. Uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Advanced Warfare, not Warfighter. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, they did. Sledgehammer did Advanced Warfare. That's Vanguard. the future one, right? Yeah, uh, I never played Advanced Warfare, actually. Me uh, either. Because I, I didn't like the futuristic stuff. I'm like, if I want futuristic, I'll just play Halo. <laughs> and they were <laughs> trying know. to do the Titanfall thing where you were running on the walls and everything. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm good. I'm cool. Um, they did Vanguard in 2021. They did World War II in 2017. Um, so they did, Sledgehammer kind of gets the random stuff. I, I kind of feel bad for Sledgehammer. I, they're the ones who'd made this one, right? Yeah. So Sledgehammer like, is always, they've always been dealt the bad hand. Like they were always <laughs> hey, like no one else wants to make this one. Can you make this one? And not that they haven't made good ones. World War, World War II was good. Uh, they're like, technically, oh God, it, what do we make next? What yeah. do we, what, are, anybody got any ideas? <laughs> um, but, yeah, crazy. Uh, they need to go back to the three-year cycle, spread out the campaigns, give people some time, because it's this isn't fair. It's not all right. Thank you so much for watching that clip from our podcast. Remember, if you want to watch the whole episode, the full episode, link will be in the description below. You can click on that and uh, check it out. We got listener questions. We got more news segments. We got uh, what you're playing. We got a lot of fun things. So yeah, more than just the news. There's a little more, a lot more to the show that you should go check out. So remember, click that link in the description. Check out that full episode.